Hello and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. This is part three of being on a Chinese brush painting kit kick. Figure with this one, we'll go through our basics and we'll start with the organ, which in the first one I did show, but we'll just um, play around with it a little bit more. So taking my stiffer brush, which in, um, if you were to order one, they would often refer to it as a wolf hair, but it's not actually wolf hair. It's, um, I think it might be weasel or something like that. Uh, the translation from Chinese to English, uh, I believe the word might be the same thing. So there's a mistranslation. And when you look into it, you'll see like a lot of people will mention that. So with the orchid, uh, from what I recall, and a lot of this is just kind of from memory, is you're going to come up and over. Your second stroke is going to cross with this one. I don't remember if you want to physically have them pass over or not. It's probably just a matter of um, aesthetics. And then they talk about this eye that's created right here. And this third stroke will come through and break that. My brush is kind of splitting at the end and I'm not sure why, but having not played with these brushes in a while, it's probably just a matter of um, just not playing with them for a while. I'm gonna water down the ink now. And in here, you can create the little orchid leaves. This is if you're just staying within the monochromatic. You have the little stem come back and it hides within it. From what I recall, the orchids will have only one flower per stem. I think there's only one species that has, I guess it would be species, that has um, more than one flower on one stem. And you can sit it in place with the edge, the dry brush of this, if you want to create some rocks. You can then repeat the pattern that we had just talked about where you have, let's do one here. Let's have it come out, come up, have another one that comes across it and one that breaks the eye. And you can start setting it in place and just having fun with it. Uh, with these, uh, a few years ago, you could buy it, well, you could still buy it. You could buy pre-mounted um, Chinese watercolor paper for finished paintings, which is really fantastic. And you get a pretty good deal on it. Because mounting in the traditional sense, I've never done it and it looks very complicated. Then they moved over to a a silicon, I think, type adhesive you could put under between this paper and a harder backing board, which you would then apply heat. So there's that. And then the way I would do it is I'd use this paper. I would take the glue transfer paper that was used to mount photographs and then mount it onto a Bristol board and I would take the iron to heat it to do that. Um, that being said, if you look for pre-mounted paper, it's a lot, lot easier to just use. Let me see where we are within the frame. So we come down here. Okay. So, um, I had ordered these long scroll papers that were pre-mounted and you can create just wonderful depth and scenes where let's have our one come out. Have our eye created, we come out. We're just gonna use this darker ink and then I'll come back 
of lighter ink at a moment. And we can create a sense of depth in the Chinese sense. Where we're looking back into the scene and we can create one that comes closer. And compared to the first video, you'll probably see that my hand and my approach is loosening up and my brush strokes are becoming better. We're having a lighter mix for our actual flowers and the stems. And in books and online, they'll have different patterns that you can use for these flowers. Three dots. And you can create a scroll in this fashion. And then like we had said in the other one, you can come in and create that three pattern. Kind of like how in Western watercolor painting, if you paint a tree, we'll talk about grounding that tree. So you can do that <clears throat> with the other smaller blades of grass around it. Or in fact, we can even do a bigger one on top of this. We're just going to do it just to see how it looks. It's all about experimenting and playing. I need more water for this one. So you can really have fun. And if you wanted to do butterflies, you can start putting those in. So it's a lot of playing around. Uh, I think I've said that quite a bit and I apologize if I'm repeating myself. Um, within the Chinese brush painting, from what I recall, there was two terms and hopefully I'm gonna pronounce them correctly. There was the Gong B style, G-O-N-B-I, which means uh, the meticulous style. And these are the really in-depth, beautiful paintings. Then there's the Z-U, X-I-E-Y-U, uh, which was kind of your fast and loose. And from the readings, the Z-U was cherished for being able to see the hand of the painter and the style that the painter had. So something could have that fun playfulness, and that's what you were looking for. So I hope you enjoyed. This is uh, me just painting some orchids for the first time in quite a while. And we're just on the Chinese brush painting kick. Part four, we'll play around with some bamboo. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you soon.